Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be doing a look for you which is very reminiscent of the 90s supermodel era. The kind of look that you would have commonly seen on the likes of Linda Evangelista during that period. In fact, my model today has slight similarity with Linda Evangelista. Lots of bronzes and golds and matte tones and shimmer tones and just something that's overall very gorgeous and very beautiful. I'm not going to be doing this look on myself, however. I have an incredibly beautiful model today, and her name is Iona Burke. She works in production, and she is also a photographer. And we met here in London, as a matter of fact, by accident. I stumbled across her Instagram account, and I thought, goodness gracious, who on earth is this absolutely gorgeous creature? So I contacted her, and I said, I'd very much like it if you were to model for me and she accepted the challenge. The look that I have created for you today also showcases how you can wear lots of bronzes and golds on very fair skin, as Iona has incredibly beautiful pale skin, a very similar shade to that of myself, and I shall be sharing the stories that myself and Iona created on Instagram. I shall leave the applicable link to my Instagram account within the description of this film, and I very much hope you enjoy the look. So we've already began and applied our base and set it through. We used MAC Face and Body in the shade C1, mixed with white, just to lift the shade ever so slightly. Then we applied MAC Full Coverage in the shade W10, under the eyes and through the centre of the face. Setting all of that through with an Inglot Loose Mattifying Setting Powder. Then I am applying Illamasqua's Cream Pigment in the shade Hollow, on a Charles Fox 8146043 brush and I'm beginning to really contour and sculpt the cheekbones, working it onto the cheek ever so slightly, then applying some of that to the forehead and into the temple, adding warmth and definition to the face. And I am gently buffing and stippling the cream pigment on, as I do not wish to disturb the foundation for which we have previously applied, and shading the jaw for additional definition. Then I am applying MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the shade NW. 10, and I am applying that on a Clinique eyeshadow brush just to give additional coverage and reduce any redness that still may be present. Then I am applying MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Brulee on a Zova 227 brush as our base and just sweeping and buffing it all over the eyelid up to the eyebrow. And with the same brush I am taking MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Soft Brown and really sculpting through the socket with that shade, creating depth and definition within the eye. Then I am sweeping it up upward and outwards into the temples ever so slightly, which is a fantastic technique as it implicitly lifts the eye. Then I am taking a clean Zova 228 brush and just sweeping that through the eye just to really ensure a seamless gradient. Then I am taking MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega and patting that onto the eyelid with a MAC Cosmetics 239 brush. Then I am applying on top of that some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Patina, which is an absolutely beautiful satiny taupe colour, and blending all our edges with our 228 brush from before. And now I am applying a mixture of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shades Patina and Omega to the underneath of the eye, with an Inglot 80H PS brush. And I am applying that quite heavily, and really quite far down, as I do consider it to be rather flattering on deep set eyes to apply a considerable amount of eyeshadow to the lower part of the eye. And as you can see, I'm just really building that colour up, and then going in with a clean MAC 217. I'm just blending all edges, and then taking a little bit of that Omega shade, and applying that round from the underneath of the eye up into the socket, just to connect everything together. And going back in with a Zova 228 brush, just to ensure seamlessness and then completing the same steps upon the other eye. Then I am applying additional Omega on a MAC Cosmetics 217 brush, strengthening the socket for which that we have created. Then I am applying Illamasqua's Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Venora, which is this extremely warm medium brown, on a Zova 231 brush, first of all to the underneath of the eye. With the same brush, I am connecting round from the underneath, sculpting through the socket, and stippling on with our 227 brush to intensify the shade shape and blending and buffing outward and I'm buffing that colour quite high and upward towards the eyebrow just to lift and elongate the eye and applying an additional amount to the underneath of the eye. Then I'm taking Illamasqua's powder eyeshadow in the shade Bronx which is an absolutely beautiful golden bronze on a MAC Cosmetics 239 brush and patting that onto the eyelids first of all then blending it outward into the socket with a MAC Cosmetics 217 brush and with MAC Cosmetics pencil in the shade 
Teddy. I'm working that into the root of the lashes on the upper lash line at the outer corner and bringing it slightly into the socket and the crease and I'm smudging and smoking it out with an Inglot 80HPS brush and buffing everything together with a MAC Cosmetics 217 brush ensuring seamlessness. Apply into the waterline MAC Cosmetics pencil in the shade NC30. Then I granted Iona the liberty of curling her own eyelashes with these QVS eyelash curlers. And with the eyelashes now curled, I am then going in with the BAM's What's Your Type mascara in the shade black and applying that directly onto the eyelashes with a MAC Cosmetics 205 brush and really working it into the roots of the eyelashes, granting us greater definition. This is certainly a gradual but very effective process. Then going in with a mascara wand just to disperse any excess and continue to build up mascara until desired effect is achieved and smudging it into the roots of the lashes, furthering definition. Then I'm applying an additional amount of the Teddy Eye Pencil to the lower lash line just to smoke and merge everything together, smudging and blending everything together on a Charles Fox 8146031 brush to ensure no harsh lines. Then I am warming up the cheeks ever so slightly with MAC Cosmetics Powder Blusher in the shade Blush Baby on a MAC 168 brush. And with the same brush, I am then applying MAC Cosmetics Powder Bronzer in the shade Matte Bronze as an additional contour and shader, further sculpting, bringing additional definition to the features, however, applying very lightly. Then I am taking Topshop's Powder Highlighter in the shade Sunbeam and applying that to the cheeks and the highest points of the cheeks with an e.l.f. small tapered brush. And with the same brush, I am then applying a light amount of the Balm's Merry Luminizer. Then contouring with Omega and Matte Bronze on an Inglot 6SS brush to the nose and the temples. Then I am applying MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Brun on a MAC 263 brush filling in the eyebrows and locking everything into place with MAC Cosmetics Brow Set Gel. Then I am applying MAC Cosmetics Lip Pencil in the shade Spice and overlining the lips ever so slightly but following the natural shape of Iona's lips. And I really wanted to create a very strong lip line. And with small sketch-like motions, you begin to build the perfect line. And I am holding down ever so slightly beside the lip to stretch the lip upwards slightly so that I get greater clearance when lining the lip and when placing the lip line. Then I am applying some of Supercover's Ultimate Foundation in the shade 22 to the lips on an Artmaster Oil Flat Series 81 8 brush. And I am coating the lips entirely with that shade as a base for what is next to come, as it is a very warm shade. Then I am applying MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Modesty, beginning at the center of the lips, then working outward, then merging everything together with a clean MAC 231 brush, creating a custom lip shade. Then I am applying some of MAC Cosmetics Full Coverage Foundation in the shade W10 on an autograph concealer and lip brush to simply perfect the shape of the lips. This is a great technique if you have created any errors within your lip lining or perhaps if you have encountered the great tragedy of smudged lipstick and then reaffirming the lip line by going back in and applying Spice Lip Pencil from before. Then I am applying some of MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Jubilee, dabbing it on top of what we have already applied, allowing Iona to apply some of it herself. Then I am applying some of MUA's Undress Your Skin Powder Highlighter on a crown brush to the neck and to the decolletage to create luminescence. So that more or less completes the look. It is a very glamorous, refined, simple yet bold, elegant, strong and feminine look. I will confess it to indeed be a personal favourite of mine. It is my belief that everyone suits neutral tones in excess. And Iona carries this look stupendously so. And Iona very decadently engaged in the event of self-portraiture, documenting her most indeed phenomenal beauty. I think you look absolutely marvellous. Thank you very much for coming. I had a great time. Bye.